What's happening, YouTube? Kenny back with another vlog. Coming to you straight from quarantine. Real quick, man, I just want to say thank y'all for showing my vlogs some love. On this channel, my vlogs don't really get a lot of love, so I appreciate y'all showing love to the vlogs. It lets me know that you guys want to see more of this. Not just how to videos, just me talking. Also, in this video, you're going to see a little snippet of the rim. But don't judge them right away because I haven't cleaned them yet. But I did catch the new rims in this video. That's going to be in another vlog down the way. It's going to be a whole vlog sending around new tires and new rims. So hopefully, y'all will subscribe for that. Anyway. I don't finna keep it a buck with y'all. I, I didn't even work on my car this week. Not at all. I actually let other dudes work on my car. Which, if you know me in real life, you can't even look at my car for too long without me saying something to you. Let alone let some dude put a wrench in my car. Shit, man. I'm finna show y'all the harsh reminder I got to never let a motherfucker work on my car. I actually let three different dudes work on my car. L let me just tell y'all about my week. Alright, so after I put the new seats in the car, so since the interior got a new look, I wanted to start working inside the engine bay and start fixing a lot of little things that was wrong with the car. I mean, before I do any of that, I know there's some stuff that I just don't want to do. Oh, I don't know how to do. Like, the first thing I did, like, on Monday, on Monday, I met a really cool dude, and he was supposed to come over to make me a new key. The key that I've been using for the car was this one that they gave me. They also gave me this broken-ass fob. I guess this was the last fob that was programmed to the car, so they gave me this when I bought the car. They did give me a new fob, but they didn't program it. So I needed this program, and I did also want a new key. You all can't really see this. It's a hell of a doll right there. This key has been used. We got to talking and do is like it's hella cheap if you get your own key and you already have your own fob. When on eBay found me this one, I can't remember how much this one was. I think it was like 12 something. It has everything. It has lock, the hood, unlock, and panic. It's in red writing. You can't really see it. And then it also has the button right here that flips it open. It's really cool. Reminds me of my grind when I used to have my motorcycle. Dude charged 50 bucks to come and cut the key and program it. And he came to the house and he came next day. Say less. Homie pulled up in a Prius, took out his big ass machine, and cut the motherfucking key right there. I thought homie was gonna have to take the key and like leave for a little bit. Nah, homie had the whole setup. When he say he mobile, he mobile. So actually at first, dude couldn't even program this one. He was having a hard time with it. So he told me I went ahead and just programmed this one for you. I was kind of bummed out. And then he said, let me just give it one more chance. I have an idea, which I appreciated. He ended up figuring out a way how to take this back part off and put in a new chip that was programmable. And he ended up getting this to work. So now I have a new key fob and spares, which was really awesome that he put in the extra effort to make sure I was happy with what he left me. Next thing I want to get taken care of was getting the engine bay clean. Y'all remember my Miata? That was the first thing I did when I brought it home. But I got the engine bay nice and shiny. That way when I start working on it, I'm not getting as dirty and that way it looks cleaner in shots, you know, for videos and all that, you know. The 350Z has a huge engine. Not only that, there's not that much space in there. And to be honest, I really just didn't want to do it. I went on Facebook, found a dude that was going to do it mobile for 40 bucks. He had the pressure washer, everything. Do I can pay this dude 40 bucks and he can finish that in like 30 minutes or I can do it myself for free and it take me like the entire a day and hella scrubbing. I wasn't trying to do all that. I ain't trying to be an asshole, okay? So first, I'm just gonna say what happened. Like I said, I didn't work on my car this week. I had different guys coming to work on the car, so I was like, fuck it, I'll just vlog everything. But y'all know how I do my vlogs. They're just clips kind of bunched together. They're not how-tos, they're not detailed, they're just me doing shit. When I go to vlog somebody, everyone acts different. Most people, when the camera cuts on, they start getting a little shy, they stop looking at me and stuff like that. They stop talking loud. And other people just are completely the opposite. They get all happy, you get to start making jokes and stuff like that. Dude comes over to the pad, right? He has no idea I'm gonna vlog him. Most people I don't even ask, I just say it like while they're doing it. Like, yo, I'm gonna get a couple shots of you, is that cool? I'll shout you out on YouTube, all that. Most people are usually cool about it. This dude was really hyped about it, which hella threw me off. And he was hella nice, which I also wasn't expecting. I'm not saying I was judging a book by his cover, but some people, you can just look at them and you can see this guy doesn't look like he's the talkative type. Dude was hella cool. He was like, yo, I'll wash your car for you too because it's gonna Splash all over the engine bay. He's like, I got you. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, you don't have to do all that. He was like, nah, trust me, I got you. It's good. Good vibes. Good vibes going on. Again, I'm still thrown off by the fact that this guy was so friendly and so nice in front of the camera. And I was just using my phone, okay? How long you been doing this? I've been doing this for 10 years, bro. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Awesome, man. This shit crazy. Yeah, it's my new project car, man. 
My second time. He was so cool about it that I'm like, all right, dude, I'm gonna bring out the whole setup. So I brought the camera and the mic out and everything. When I'm recording someone, I'm looking through a little screen. I have to look through the camera to make sure I'm getting the right shots. I can't be looking at what he's doing and looking through the camera at the same time or else I might miss the shot. I come out with the camera and I start recording. This guy was so hyped about the camera, he actually started telling me what shots I should get, which was hella funny to me. Again, throwing me off, right? Fool was trying to go into detail, like disconnect the battery first, which again, this isn't a how-to video, so I don't really show those little details like that. So when he was saying it, I was like, oh, for sure I'll record that, for sure I'll record that. But in my head, I knew I wasn't gonna put it in, so I wasn't really paying attention to what he's doing. I'm gonna stop talking, and I'm just gonna show you the video. Don't forget to disconnect your battery first before you start doing anything. For sure. Mm -hmm. Like that, you already know, your batteries have to be disconnected before any, any electricity or any, any kind of uh, parts or anything. Okay. You'll avoid from all that stuff. I'm gonna get the back of your shirt, right? How long you been say you've been doing this? Ten years, brother. Ten years? Ten years detailing, interior, steaming, uh, hot, uh, hot water extractor. And here we go, brother. Everywhere, huh? You always try to take all the grease from all the little cuts where you can't get the brush in. Uh -huh. That's where you all do the pressure. That's why I have an extended nozzle for the same reason. To try to squeeze it in places where my hand doesn't fit. Yeah. You know, so you don't, bro. Perfect. You know? Everything, like let's say, really, if you just zoom into that little piece right there in that corner. Yeah. That's what is this man for? Basically tight, tight spaces. Beautiful man. Hell yeah. Look at the difference of all this. Did y'all see it? Did y'all see it? I'll show y'all one more time. Don't forget to disconnect your battery first before you start doing anything. For sure. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to disconnect your battery first before you disconnect your battery. For sure. For sure. Homeboy disconnected the wrong cable. Mr. 10 year veteran right here disconnected the positive cable instead of the ground cable. Not a big deal. He probably could have gotten away with just disconnecting the positive cable if the cable wasn't still touching the side of the terminal. If both cables are still touching those terminals, there is a very high chance that that, that some electrical component in the car is gonna short out. There ain't no excuse why he should have done that. Whenever you're gonna clean the engine bay, it's always good to get the cable you disconnected, wrap it in a rag, and put it on the side of the battery to make 100% sure it doesn't touch any sort of metal. Fucking mistakes happen. After dude leaves, I go to turn the car, car doesn't turn on. I go back to the engine bay, see what the fuck, and I can see right there, the positive terminal and the positive cable were completely touching. My guy didn't even reconnect it when he left. As soon as I saw that, my heart sank. I reconnected the positive cable, went back to the car, lights come on, but then it cuts off and dies as soon as you start to crank. And I'm thinking to myself, oh shit, this guy blew my starter. In a fucking panic, I rip out the battery, take it O'Reilly's. It, it tested to be a good battery. I take out every single motherfucking fuse. Tested all of them. They were all good. I put the battery back in. And at this point, dude, I'm almost shaking how upset I am. Not only because the starter is a bitch to take out in this car, but because I don't even know exactly what it is. After I put the battery in, I text dude before testing the car. I sent him a little paragraph. Y'all can read for yourselves just basically saying what happened right now everybody was brought up different everybody goes by their own set of principles right how my mama raised me anything could be fixed but an apology needs to be stated first you need to admit that you're wrong to move forward now this guy he didn't know if i wanted money he didn't even know if i wanted him to fix it he didn't know nothing dude blocks me which i can respect i can respect i'm mad enough to admit to myself that i would have done the same thing he drove hella far for a 40 buck job i only tipped him 10 bucks and now we talking about going to the mechanics for sure 
phone blocking your ass. Dude probably was panicking. Really, all I wanted was an apology. But again, mistakes happen. Ain't that big of a deal. A lot of cussing later, I put the key in the ignition, and that bitch started up. Even at this point right now, he still don't even know if my car ever turned on. I don't even hold it against him. I honestly wasn't even that mad after the car turned on. My man did a really good job cleaning the car. Not only did he do an awesome job cleaning the engine bay, which is what I only paid him for, he cleaned the entire car with the foam and pressure washer. <laughs> He got on his knees and cleaned each rim, which those rims I got rid of the next day. Point is, he didn't need to do any of that. So I didn't really trip about it. I was like, fuck it, we're even. He caused me a whole day of stress, but he also washed the exterior of my car for free, so fuck it. The crazy part I think about it is that I told him that I was gonna shout him out. He was hella excited about it. I told him when this video was coming out, he was like, oh, you're dropping it the same day as my birthday. It's a birthday gift. Like, hella cool guy. Like, if you know I'm gonna put you in a video, why would you not respond to me? Because I could have really took this through the dirt, you know? I could be on this thing talking shit. This is phone number. This is this guy's face. Talking all sorts of stuff, right? Whatever. Car's fine now. And if I had to be honest, next time I need an engine bay clean, I'm probably gonna try to hit dude up again. Because he did such a well job and he was hella professional, hella nice. Came on time, came with all his gear. Honestly, I'd still recommend this dude. 10 years, bro. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome, man. Anyways, moving on. Next thing I did was took my car to the swamp meet to get tints. Now, I've done tints on this channel. I've done tints for other people before. It's not the hardest thing in the world. My opinion, for the amount of money you save doing it yourself, it's just not worth the time it takes. If you ever done tint for your first time, it takes a hell of a long time. And it takes a lot of film because you don't even get it done right the first time. So, I know some badass tint guys at the swamp meet. So, I took my car with them. Cost 100 bucks for the two windows, two blind spots, and the hatch. Needless to say, I was extremely happy with the result. These are the same dudes that did my limo tint on my Civic. To be honest with you, I don't even know what percent that is. Pretty sure it's like 5 or 15. These tint guys, I 100 billion percent recommend it to anyone getting their tints done. Not only do they do a really good job, not only are their prices really fair, not only do they work fast, but they take pride in their work. I was watching these guys work and I watched one of the workers, there's only two guys, I watched one of the guys redo a passenger window twice. Now to other people, you might see that like, Oh, what does he not know what he's doing? I didn't see like that at all. I saw it like this guy has enough pride in his work to not give the customer anything less than his best job. I saw it each time he did it. Standing from afar, I didn't see anything wrong with the tent. But apparently there was a minor imperfection that didn't meet his standard or the standard that he gives his customers. So he redid it. He wasted two films on that window. The third time he got it right. That speaks volumes for me. To me, that just really shows that they have a lot of pride in the work. But yeah, man. To the dude that watched the engine bay, unfortunately right now I am dealing with some electrical problems. I do have some how-to views in the way and I have no one else to blame other than this dude because I had zero mechanical or electrical issues with the car before he washed it. But it is what it is. He just gave me a little bit more content. Shout out to all three dudes that worked in my car. All three dudes I still would highly recommend. The car really has a good look, man. I bro. I ain't telling nobody to break the law. Follow your own state's laws on tents. But for those of you who've never been in a fully blacked out car, you're really missing out on some vibes. Just knowing that nobody can see you and you can see everybody. People have a misconception about tents just because it looks dark from the outside. They think it's going to be dark looking out from the inside of the car too. You can still see everything. Yeah, it's a little darker, but it's not that bad. I absolutely love them. I'm the type of dude to ride with all windows down and the music blasting anyway. I'm that ass so at the stoplight but yeah that's what i did this week now the next couple weeks we're gonna be start on working on the interior Ooh, the interior's getting a whole makeover no spoilers hope y'all stay tuned for that since it's 350z started since day one on this channel i want to show you guys every single thing i do to this car so we can see this car grow on this channel together i appreciate it if y'all made it to the end of the video i'm trying to get better with vlogs i'm really trying with quarantine it's hella hard to get content for vlogs but i'm trying to start getting in the groove so when we do go back to normal Vlogs are just gonna be like a regular on this channel. Maybe like every two how-tos is gonna be a vlog or something like that. Now the car 
much ready for mod because my how to videos when the engine bays can look all nice and pretty. Once again, I appreciate you guys made it to the end of the video. Stay tuned for next week when we start our makeover the interior. Make sure y'all subscribe if you ain't subscribed yet. Make sure you tell your car you love them. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.